pressure of hearing the questions about the Iowa job. Dr. T uh, Tom Davis has held on longer than they thought he would as he bows out. How do you handle that situation, and can you possibly ignore the fact that that's what you're in coaching for is to move up to the big jobs? Well, I think, you know, it's all flattering, and, and we've been able to hear it in our program for the last three years, and, you know, I think our, our players appreciate uh, a coaching staff that's wanted and talked about uh, versus the flip side of it, that uh, you're wondering if your coaching staff's going to be there because uh, people aren't happy or people don't want that staff. And, uh, you know, those are things we'll address when the season's over. I don't want to take anything away from what our coaching staff is doing right now, and I definitely don't want to take anything away from our players. This is a tremendously special group of young men. His father, Sam, and also yeah. they just tack in another assistant coach, and it'd be like nothing ever happened. And I think that's kind of a done deal as well. You want to bring the dad in here, like you said, it's, it's already babysitting paid for right. right there. You bring the dad, and he can watch the three kids, and he can help be the assistant coach. That's not too bad either. And it's just a great scene here, all the people that are coming out to support the new coach. And, you know, we would be remiss not to mention the great accomplishments that Tom Davis gave to this university. And now it seems like he's passing the torch on to a young coach who came from Indiana who pretty much torched the Hawkeyes in his early years back in the 80s. Seven three-pointers in that NCAA championship back that? in 1987. There are some other players here as well. We said Glenn Worley who perhaps, hopefully, would be a future Hawkeye. Right. But J.R. Koch who is now officially a former Hawkeyes in the building. Some other players are expected to be here in the back of the room here and watch what happens with there. So let's uh, let's send it back to Michelle and see what's going on there. Michelle. Well, you know, guys, I have a question for you for folks that may not be familiar with basketball. If it is Alfred, he's coming from southwest Missouri state what size school is that and how will that compare to his uh, appointment at university of iowa is it a big step up for him indeed it is anytime you come into the big ten it's a big step up and, right. and there are a lot of fans that actually might have seen steve alford coach around here in fact we talked to him mm -hmm. when sms played you and i earlier this season up in the uh, the unidome up there so yeah you know, familiar fans and nbc anything big ten is just big time basketball i mean when you think about it too i mean the salary we talked about this last night in the show he was apparently making 200 grand at SMS. It would double if he comes to the University of Iowa. So you would think that this was a very good uh, move for him to come to the Big Ten. He knows the Big Ten as well. And it should be very interesting. I cannot wait. Iowa, Indiana, offered the oh, student against the teacher. How man. ironic. And a lot of the talk for a long time was he was mm -hmm. supposed to be the guy that followed Bobby Knight. That's what a lot of people thought, that Alford was waiting until Bobby Knight, because he passed up a job at Clemson. He could have been Clemson's head coach this year if he wanted to be. He didn't take that job. He stayed at SMS. He's been recruited for a while, especially as what he's done lately. But there was a talk that he was going to go to Indiana. One of the rumors was his wife didn't want him to be the guy that replaced Bobby Knight because, boy, you want to talk about big shoes to fill there. And he's got big shoes to fill here. It was 13 years ago, almost to the day, that uh, Tom Davis came in here, introduced by Bump Elliott as the Iowa basketball coach at that time. All-time winning as coach is now gone. Now we're looking forward to seeing a new era, not only in the football program, but now in the basketball program as well. Again, the 30-somethings. We've talked about that before. How ironic. Uh, Rod's around 32, you know, the guy's a young guy, too. <laughs> I, I wish I could coach. I don't think I quite have go. the resume these guys do. And we talked about the resume a little bit. He's got four years at uh, Southwest Missouri State, four years before that at the Division Three school, where he actually played for a, a coach for a division title there as well. Absolutely. When he was at Manchester, he was hired in 1991. It took him three years after that. The team went 30-0 and 0 mm. going into the Division Three National Championship game. They came up on the short end of the stick. That's when Steve Alford's coaching career pretty much came to full, when people started realizing who he was but ironic I want to take you back to 1996 I was a senior at Indiana State University Steve Alford was up for the job at Indiana State the administrators didn't want an Indiana guy to come in they thought that he would have those Bobby Knight tendencies of going off on players but uh, uh. he could have been at Indiana State we could be talking about a guy that's coming from Terre Haute Indiana but that's not the case he went to SMS and he just torched Indiana State I am first-hand account <laughs> he would beat us like a drum <laughs> and, and it's interesting you talked about uh, bringing in uh, Bobby Knight type he, he doesn't coach like that he's a completely different coach than that he learned the x's and o's and stuff from bobby not like that but he's not the fiery type guy that night he's a, as far as i know he's never thrown a chair on the basketball a chair. court he's thrown so. a couple of chess bumps though if you remember that yeah. ncaa oh, time, that's been made a, you know, a big story yeah. about how he chess bumped one of his players after the tennessee <laughs> game now remember this Wisconsin only scored 32 points against Steve Alford's defense. So you would think he's a great shooter when he was in college, but he is now 
change that into a defensive philosophy where he's teaching kids to shut down the shooters. And that's something that Iowa didn't do last year, not to take anything away from their coaching staff, but guys would come in here and just put up 20 and 30 points on yep. the Hawkeyes. Now Steve Alford comes in with that defensive philosophy. That might change things up a lot. And he brings the offense as well. Remember, they beat Tennessee, who was the fourth seed. They beat him by 30 points, so he's got all ends of the spectrum covered here. As far and, as you know, at top-ranked Duke, I mean, if you stay at least 15 to 10 points with Duke, yeah. you pretty much won the uh, game, uh, to say the least. <laughs> so it was, uh, it, it's imp impressive credentials. And you know, one thing that's interesting is he talked to those players last night at Southwest Missouri State, I guess a 40-minute closed-door meeting. And, and I'm, I'm hearing in my ear, we, we've been talking for a while. Southwest Missouri State has now confirmed that he is the new coach for the Iowa Hawkeyes. In fact, here comes Jake Jakes. Some of the players are stepping in now, and, and we can guess that Steve Alford will be soon behind. I see Ryan Lursman there. You know, some of these guys are, uh, like I said, J.R. Koch is here in the building. There's he, a guy he's sitting down. There's Guy Rucker. Question, will Guy be back? Will Lursman be back? Lursman told me he'd be back. Guy said he'd like to come back. Joey Range and Dean Oliver are a couple of the players that said, we're going to wait and see who the coach is. But this has been widely speculated that it would be Steve Alford. So you can pretty much assume they've already got their mindset as far as they knew who the coach is going to be, now they have to see what they want to do. You know, I think that only Steve Alford can help these young men out, especially on the defensive side of it. He's also a, such a young coach, too. He can relate to young players. You can see that with SMS. And uh, we're just now waiting for Steve Alford to come in the door right now. And uh, I'm just looking forward to this. Yeah, this will be fun. This is fun. And he was, he was such a fiery player. I mean, and it wasn't that long ago. That's the, the interesting thing, being only 34. It wasn't that long ago. You can still remember him playing and playing well. Plus, he played in the NBA for four years as well. Golden State and Dallas played in the... Uh, He's an NBA player. Yeah, he's an NBA player. Scored 744 points here. We got Hello. Jake Jakes coming behind us. What's going on, guys? So, now you can see how short we really are. No Lurzman, thanks for coming are. by, man. Hey, it's looking not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're, I want to stand up on this chair. All the players coming in. This is uh, exciting stuff. And most of these guys are the younger guys, the upperclassmen, mm -hmm. that are more interested than perhaps anyone in this building to see what the coach has to say. Right. Because this is what it's all about. This is their future. I mean, this pretty much is going to determine if they're going to stay or if they're going to try to go elsewhere. Uh, Tom Davis said last night in his last Tom Davis show that he would be here for the players if they needed him in any type of way. And uh, I'm sure these players are just wanting to see what Steve Offer can help them with uh, on the court and off the court as well. You know, another thing that's interesting, we're talking about the Southwest Missouri State players. Remember when Jim O'Brien left Boston College to come to Ohio State, he came. A year later, a kid named Scooney Penn transferred over. So what will happen? Will they bring over uh, perhaps someone transfer with them? Will there be a Southwest Missouri State player that wants to go? Let me talk about his Indiana ties as well, too. If you look at SMS's team that they had this year, they had at least half of their roster was kids from Indiana. So he can obviously recruit the Midwest. And also, you know, we're still waiting to see how Rich Walker will, if he'll come in. And there's the Coach Alford right there. Okay, there he is, Steve Alford is in the building, the new Iowa head coach. Sitting down, all the camera people around him. This is a, a major, major announcement. Congratulations for the Hawkeyes. Let's see what the coach has to say. Yeah, that's right. And you can see the gaggle of photographers right now trying to get their first look at Steve. First of all, for the second time uh, in about three months, thanks for coming on such uh, short notice. I think uh, the uh, fact this room is filled up says something about the Hawkeyes and uh, their love for Iowa basketball. Anyway, we're gonna start it out right now by uh, introducing, as soon as we get done with the uh, photographers here, we'll wait a minute, and uh, University President Mary Sue Coleman. Guys, he's going to be here a while. <laughs> you can get other pictures. <laughs> great. Sir. Yeah, you're all right. President Okay, Cole. okay, great. Well, I'd like to uh, welcome everybody here today. It's certainly a great day. First of all, I'd like to extend my congratulations to our team. They did a great job this year, and we're very proud of the way that they represented, they and their coaches represented the University of Iowa. It was really terrific. But we have another great event to celebrate today, and that's uh, the fact that we were able to lure one of the best young coaches in the country, Steve Alford, to come to the University of Iowa. Steve, we believe, matches extremely well with everything that we believe here at Iowa, and it's just going to be uh, a wonderful, wonderful thing for all of us. 
So now what I'd like to do is to turn the microphone over to Ann Rhodes for just a couple of minutes for her to say a few words as well. And I know none of you came to hear me, so this is going to be very brief. I want to reiterate what Mary Sue said. We're enormously proud of our team this year. They did a terrific job. They gave us lots and lots of great basketball. Um, we're here to welcome Steve Alford. I'm thrilled that he's going to be our new basketball coach. I think he's going to be absolutely spectacular. I want to welcome Tanya also. It's a, uh, they're a team, and I've been very impressed in talking with both of them. I think it's going to be an absolute super fit with the University of Iowa. And so I say to you, welcome, and it's great to be a Hawkeye. Thank you. Great. Thanks, President Coleman, Nan Rhodes, and uh, now I'd like to uh, turn it over for our special introduction to Athletic Director Bob Bolton. Thanks, Phil. Uh, I, I also want to congratulate Tom and our coaches and our team. It, it was really an exciting run through the tournament, and especially uh, Kent and JR and Jason and, and Jess, uh, the seniors that did such a great job with, um, with leading that effort. It really, really was a lot of fun to watch them. Uh, this is uh, the Monday after what has been an outstanding weekend, a, a game in the, uh, in the Sweet 16, and Jim Zaleski and his staff did a terrific job with the wrestling tournament over the weekend. Um, congratulations also to Doug Schwab and T.J. Williams for national championships, but it was really a team effort, and uh, it was a lot of fun to see that team come together in the second half of the season, and it was nice. We got a, got a big baseball win yesterday, won the Homestead Tournament, so it really was a, really was a fun weekend, and it's going to be a very good week as well. Um, it's been an interesting winter. Uh, this is probably one of the better kept secrets that uh, we've had around the athletics department. Uh, it's, uh, it's been three months of articles that he was going to get the job, and now uh, I, I'm just glad in the last few days we were actually able to pull it off. You know, you know, you know how much we want to make the popular choice. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, cha change is always very uncomfortable, and uh, it, it is uh, particularly... Uh, I think the anxiety level goes up, uh, equivalent to the extent to which you don't have control over what's going on, and uh, there's been a lot of anxiety over the change in football and the and the uh, change in basketball. And uh, I, I, after three months of working with Kirk Ferentz, I just couldn't be any more excited. And and I'll tell you, as we sit here this morning, I can't be more excited about the uh, the future of the Iowa basketball program. Uh, it's been difficult for our staff. Uh, it's been difficult for our players. Uh, we've worked very hard to make sure above and beyond everything else that the student-athlete experience continued to be just as positive as it could be. But uh, this was an unusual process in basketball because of the extent to which we had a lot of time to go about the process. There was ample opportunity for extensive research. And uh, I, I guess I first talked to Bill Rowe, the director of athletics, at. Uh, at uh, Southwest Missouri State uh, probably sometime in December about uh, my interest in Steve. And uh, we wanted to make sure that it wasn't intrusive for his team or for our team. But over that period of time, uh, I spoke with uh, dozens of people about potential basketball coaches. And uh, a few names kept coming up over and over and over again. And one of those was Steve Alford. And uh, the more I talked to um, a dozen or so experts and colleagues that I really uh, whose, whose opinions I really value, uh, the more it narrowed down on Steve and the more we were able to uh, develop a long-range re long relationship. And um, I, I saw his team play uh, several times this year, watched him on, on tape uh, a lot of different times. And uh, we, uh, it became apparent uh, the more research I did, the more people I talked to, that uh, he had an awful lot of things that we value at the University of Iowa. Uh, it is... Um, very important in my opinion that we have the right fit. Uh, we have very high aspirations and in order to realize those aspirations, uh, it, the only way that we will agree to do it is to, to do it the right way uh, to, in ways that develop young people uh, in all phases of their lives on campus. And uh, Steve is bright and articulate and highly motivated and, and very accomplished for, for a guy that's uh, just in his mid-30s. Uh, he has an absolutely terrific work ethic and uh, desire to uh, develop a model program uh, in, the, in the spirit of the best and most competitive programs in this country. And uh, he has been highly successful at every level. It's uh, in, in any way you want to slice it, he's a, he's a winner. Uh, comes from a tremendous basketball family and, and has a great young family of his own. Uh, 
three young children, and, and uh, I, I just heard him describe uh, his two boys to the team as gym rats, and that's the way he wants them. And uh, he, he's a guy that one of the things I kept hearing over and over again was he's a guy that spends the time to build great relationships with people around him, people he works with, uh, people he recruits, people he coaches, uh, people who support his program. And I think that really is an important thing, somebody that spends the time to nurture and develop those relationships because when all is said and done, it's, it's about relationships. And uh, this marks the beginning of, of what I expect to be a, a long and very successful Steve Alford relationship with the University of Iowa. And it is with great pleasure that I present to you our new basketball coach, Steve Alford. Thank you very much, and uh, I guess I want to start also by uh, congratulating uh, Coach Davis and the staff and uh, the players of this year's team uh, for your efforts, uh, because I know it was a difficult season. I think things probably got a little bit difficult for our team as well, uh, coming to Des Moines to play Drake, uh, going to uh, Northern Iowa to play those two teams in the Missouri Valley, and hearing the hecklers behind the bench of um, he's moving on. Uh, type of comments was hard on our team as well and uh, I think there were some uh, and I think that's why I'm so proud of both teams uh, uh, for the Iowa players to stay to the grind and, and really go through what I think were a lot of possible distractions and still accomplish the things that they accomplished um, really intrigued me more about the situation uh, at Iowa and uh, I've not spoken with coach Davis as of yet uh, just because of the timing of everything but uh, I will do that um, because I, I do respect uh, I do respect him and, and the situation. And as Bob said, change sometimes can be difficult, um, but we hope that it, it's going to be as smooth as possible um, and be very very exciting. And uh, I'm proud of our kids at SMS uh, for what they accomplished. I think with all the rumors that really started uh, at the beginning of the national tournament, uh, I think I knew Iowa was in. So I was very pleased when we got an at-large bid. Um, I think that helped matters. Um, and then it seemed like you, uh, Iowa was always playing a day ahead. Um, and it was kind of match play. Um, Iowa advanced, and uh, I knew we needed to advance. And uh, uh, Iowa advanced again, and uh, I knew we needed to advance again. And uh, I didn't know if we could get all the way to the Sweet 16. So, uh, uh, and then watching your game with uh, UConn, um, and seeing how that went down and, and almost beating them, I, the thoughts ran through my mind. We're playing Duke. This is probably the end of the advancing. So uh, uh, it is a very exciting uh, situation, and that could be my first game. Uh, uh, depending on how the schedule fall, falls out uh, next winter, uh, we could get Duke again. So uh, it's just a very exciting time for me and my family. Um, I've really enjoyed uh, the conversations I've had with Bob over the year. And uh, really appreciative of his respectfulness. Uh, he's gone about his, his job in a very professional way and um, never calling me on a game day. Uh, in fact, I don't think ever calling me uh, the day before a game. Uh, he always picked and chose very carefully, uh, not because I think he knew I didn't want any distractions with my team, and yet I think he knew there was some, uh, uh, some big-time interest in my part with the University of Iowa. So uh, I really respect that in him because... Uh, I did have a very special team at SMS with some great players and great people, uh, and we were able to really have a, a nice run, do something that hadn't been done there before, and that was a lot of fun for us as a coach, as staff, and, uh, and the players there at SMS. So uh, it really turned out as, as well as it could possibly turn out, and uh, now for this to come full cycle and, uh, and be introduced as the basketball coach here at Iowa um, is a very, very exciting time for me. Uh, I'm glad that I'm still being labeled as a young coach. Uh, I don't know how long that that uh, can keep up, but uh, at 34, um, it's exciting to have the opportunity to be uh, back in the Big Ten, um, obviously a, a player in the Big Ten, and know uh, full well what the Big Ten Conference is all about and uh, the rigors and wars of uh, all the places you have to go. And um, it doesn't matter how much time passes, uh, we won a national championship in 87, and I'll never forget uh, one of our losses was right here because I, I think an official made a mistake and said I stepped out of bounds on a three-point shot. Uh, so now it's fun now to head up this program and knowing that uh, 
Now, I, I think it was a good call. Uh, and <laughs> it's, it, it's, uh, it's amazing how those changes happen. But uh, uh, Tanya and I are very excited, and I, I'm fortunate she was able to come with me today, and our kids uh, were not because of our advancing in the national tournament. Uh, my kindergartner has missed an awful lot of school. Um, and obviously, as I uh, talked and, and met uh, my new team very briefly, and we'll get to do so more, I think, over the next several weeks, uh, one thing that uh, I usually don't tolerate is missing any school. So uh, even at the kindergarten age, though he's very advanced uh, for a kindergarten, um, I, we got to take him out for the final four here as well. So uh, you can't, and I, that's kind of the best kept secret anyway. I, t Tanya and then uh, me, I think we're uh, down the road a little bit. Uh, I think the, uh, the main ingredients to what makes our family tick are uh, Corey, Bryce, and Kayla. So we can't do that in the first day. You, we're gonna have to, you're going to have to warm to us before uh, we throw uh, uh, the three big giants at you. So, uh, <laughs> but it is a, it's an exciting time. I think it's a great fit, as Bob said. I think this is a, a chance. It's the first time, I think, that I've been able in my coaching career uh, starting out at Manchester and then uh, going on to SMS, uh, all the recruiting that goes on, and I have to be in, in mom and dad's homes, and uh, uh, I think they enjoy my style, they enjoy uh, the system and uh, the what we put on as far as our emphasis on academics and uh, uh, representing yourself well in the community, uh, the type of people we want to produce and, and help uh, produce from each institution I've been at. Uh, all that sounded great. Uh, but when that question came up, will you be here for four years, um, that's always been a very difficult question. And uh, now I think the most rewarding thing for me is that uh, at 34, uh, I've got an opportunity now to be in, a, in an institution where uh, I would like to be here for a long, long time and uh, have no aspirations of uh, looking anywhere else or moving on anywhere else. Uh, it's exciting to be where you want to be uh, and now know through the recruiting process and the scheduling and the development of players, uh, now you know you can see uh, the development of a national program uh, start to take place. And I think there's a great foundation here. I think there's great tra tradition here. Uh, and we'd just like to further that. And it's going to take a lot of hard work out of coaches and in particular the players. Um, but if we can get that demeanor and attitude instilled in the players, uh, there's a pretty fine line. Uh, between a Final Four team and a Sweet 16 team and a team not making the tournament. Uh, and you've got to have that edge, and that edge usually has to do with your passion. Um, and of all the teams we've played this year, um, Duke had the biggest, not only were they most talented, they had the most driven passion uh, of any team we played. And I think that's what we want to instill in our players, um, is that you've got to have great passion to play this game. And uh, I had it as a player. I definitely have it as a coach. Uh, I love being involved uh, with young people, and I love being involved with the game of basketball and trying to teach uh, the things that we try to instill on a daily basis within our program. Uh, challenging our kids spiritually, socially, uh, academically, and athletically, um, those are all the things that I think uh, an 18 to 22-year-old uh, needs to be challenged in. And, uh, and you get the education at the University of Iowa and the experiences that you can have on the basketball floor uh, you are very well equipped then at the age of 22 or 23 uh, to be very, very productive uh, leaving this institution. So uh, it's a great day for our family, and uh, we're very excited to um, take over this position, and we hope that uh, uh, it's an exciting time for all, all Iowa fans, and uh, we hope it's just the beginning of something that's going to be very, very special as we uh, start to compete for the things that mean the most for us. Uh, any questions? Uh, my father will. Uh, I, I, we have not addressed all the staff issues as of yet. Uh, uh, I will be talking to, to Coach Walker later on today. Um, I have several others in mind, uh, but a definite. Uh, my father's a definite for a lot of reasons. Uh, one, he's dad. Um, and as he said, uh, you know, I've got two responsibilities. Uh, I either bring him along as an assistant coach or I think about nursing home, and that gets to be a little bit uh, that gets to be a little bit time consuming for me right now and everything else. So uh, I get free babysitting from mom and dad. Uh, Dad's babysitting right now. So uh, there's a lot of those intangibles that uh, go into decisions like this. But uh, no, on a serious side, Dad's been in high school coaching for 30 years and college coaching for four years. There's not a high school that he can't get into from a recruiting standpoint. He has a great rapport with uh, coaches across the country uh, because of what have he's accomplished uh, as a coach. 
um, and he's just got a great relationship with our players. Uh, you know, he was a favorite SMS, and I know he'll become a favorite here. Uh, uh, and I think from a head coach, you always want loyalty. And uh, well, if you can't get loyalty from your dad, uh, <laughs> you're probably not going to get it. So uh, has a tremendous work ethic, and uh, we're excited about him coming on. And I think probably within the next week to two weeks, uh, the entire staff will be in place. But uh, uh, I think that's going to be slow to develop just from the standpoint that um, I think Bob and I have held true on our promise that uh, through this difficult situation, there weren't going to be a lot of contacts. Uh, uh, we've had very few meetings together. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations over the phone, uh, but we wanted to wait until both Iowa and SMS were completely over with uh, further any kind of uh, serious talks. And uh, obviously with Iowa and SMS advancing to the tournament, that's only left a couple days here. So uh, the staff will fall into place, but uh, you know it'll be a staff that'll be full of energy and enthusiasm, and uh, they'll know within the first week of the job of uh, uh, my goal and my mission of the program. Steve, on my right, first things first, your last name is Alford and not Alford. That's exactly right. Now, I played for a guy in college that um, would say it differently than that. So, uh, you know, I, that's fine, it, however you want to pronounce it. But, uh, you know, I've always made it uh, a pretty big deal that it is Alford. Uh, my dad would probably say Alford uh, just because uh, when he was in high school, the coach at Newcastle, that's what they called him, and he never took time to change it. Uh, but my grandfather, who just passed away in July, um, always made a point that it was offered. So uh, I would rather that be uh, offered. But uh, I know there'll probably, a, as much as I hope there'll never be a loss, there probably will be. And any time there's a loss, uh, your name's up for anything. So, uh, uh, but it is offered. Uh, no, I have not. Tell us a little bit about uh, a 12-year span in which you have going from the NCAA tournament to where you are today back with the Big Ten. Uh, that's a pretty quick rise, is it not? Yeah, it's a quick rise, but if you take a 12-year span, um, I was in the NBA at 21, so if you back up uh, 12 years from 21, you're at 9. So, um, you know, as a 9-year-old, uh, then going into the NBA at 21, that's a quick rise. So. Uh, you know, I, I think people that uh, get to the grind and work hard and you have a true love and passion for what you do, uh, anything can be accomplished. And uh, I think I did that as a player. I wasn't an athletic player. Um, I had zero dunks in my career. Um, but in my career, I scored over 6,000 points uh, through my college and NBA and high school career. So uh, I had a great passion for the game of basketball, and I've been able to have numerous experiences from uh, international play, playing uh, in the Olympics, and... Uh, uh, people said I was put on that team because my coach was the coach, and by the time it was all over with, I was the starting guard with uh, Michael Jordan in the gold medal game. So uh, I've always tried to uh, get there a little quicker than the norm, and I think I've been able to do that because of how much basketball means to me and the passion and the amount of time I put into it uh, because I just love being around it. Uh, I love playing the game and had a lot of success playing the game, and uh, now I really enjoy teaching the game. And, uh, you know, that's probably evident of my... I don't sit on the bench much. Uh, I stand for about the whole 40 minutes, and uh, I think it's because they won't let me go out in between the lines anymore, but I want to get as close as possible. Uh, how about a comment on your pro uh, experience then? How did that fit in? Well, I played four years professionally, three with the Mavs and one with the Warriors, and um, I was fortunate to play in two very good programs for Coach McLeod in Dallas and uh, Don Nelson with the Warriors, uh, two guys that I've been able to learn and take a lot from now that I'm in the coaching level. Uh, but uh, when I graduated uh, from Indiana, I took up the game of golf. And um, I'd never played golf in my life. And uh, I went to Dallas, which is warm climate, and uh, got with a couple of vets and Brad Davis, and uh, who had access to every golf course in uh, the Dallas metropolitan area, and started playing a lot more golf than playing basketball. And uh, so my passion grew to golf rather than playing, and that's probably why my pro career uh, dove in a hurry. Uh, I forgot about how important individual workouts were and um, keeping your skills finely tuned and getting better. Uh, so my pro career didn't go as, uh, as I would hoped, but uh, getting out in four years and uh, Tanya becoming pregnant with our first child and making the transition right into college basketball at Manchester College uh, was a blessing in its own self. Uh, what's the financial situation? 
We are, are still in the process of working since, on that. Since going to Sweet 16, we're still <laughs> negotiating. <laughs> <laughs> Is that enough, or do you want something more specific? <laughs> uh, it, it is, uh, we're still working on it, and it'll be a while. Uh, it's uh, a $150,000 base. There will be uh, co additional compensation for uh, guaranteed camp and endorsements, and, uh, and also uh, a, uh, a salary in recognition of the fundraising and public relations responsibility that the coach has. Uh, the base salary is going to be in the $350,000 range and with uh, with the uh, shoe and apparel contracts and radio and TV and the other um, additional revenues that are able to be captured, I, I would guess that the uh, the annual base salary will be, in the, uh, be something uh, right around $600,000. Uh, we will put in place over the next couple of months a, uh, a schedule of incentives that uh, could raise total compensation to uh, to something in the nine hundred thousand dollar range, but those things are are yet to be determined. And Steve and I will sit down and and uh, uh, try and determine what we think are are achievable incentives. Uh, perhaps uh, a little a little a higher level of aspiration, and then some perhaps what you could call pie in the sky aspirations too. And, and I think that's what a good incentive package ought to do is is describe. Um, a, a schedule of, of opportunities, and, and that's very similar to what we what we are uh, putting in place for uh, Coach Ferentz as well. I think philosophically, it's uh, it's very consistent with what we put there, and, and I think financially, it's very consistent with what what we're putting there. Steve, three days ago, you're our coach in the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament against Duke. Today, here you're being named coach of Iowa. What are your emotions at this time? Well, it's just. Uh, it's a great time for us and our family. It's it's been a, a roller coaster of emotions. Uh, last night I had to meet with my team uh, at SMS, and that wasn't easy because we've developed great relationships with those players, um, and and I do get to to know them very very well. So that that's tough to to separate. Uh, and we hope, as I told them, that uh, they'll make a lot of visits upon graduating from uh, SMS to Iowa City to see our teams play. Uh, just like my kids at Manchester have followed us at SMS and attended our, uh, we had a guy at our, uh, go all the way to New Jersey that, to see us play uh, Duke that played for me at Manchester. We've had several players from Manchester come out and stay at our home uh, for our SMS games. And uh, I hope that the players from SMS will continue to follow us here just as I'm going to continue to follow them. So um, that's been a roller coaster type of uh, emotion into today uh, of meeting my new team and uh, though very informal and very uh, brief, uh, the excitement of going into uh, taking over a new program and uh, uh, trying to instill right from the beginning of uh, what's going to be important in, in getting this program to where we want it to go. Has that been your goal to be a Big Ten coach? Is that a goal? Oh, I think in the back of my mind, that's something that I'd always hoped for. Uh, you know, I was very fortunate that Bill Robinson, the president at Manchester College, gave me the opportunity to start my career at, at Manchester. I, I was a volunteer coach for my father for one month after uh, being released by Sacramento, um, and Bill Robinson called, and I didn't know if that's what I wanted to do or not. It was a Division three school in, in uh, northeast Indiana that, in the history of the school, which was 110 years running, had had five winning seasons. Uh, so I didn't know if that was a, a situation I wanted to get into, and Dad, in his great wisdom, uh, basically said, look, uh, you've got two decisions here. Work for me for free or get paid working for them. So... Uh, in that great wisdom, uh, I took that position, and uh, it was one of the, the best things I've ever done. Uh, boy, I had great teams there, great kids, non-scholarship type of environment, and uh, I was able to make mistakes. I was able to learn at the coaching level uh, and not be real noticeable in those mistakes. And uh, I've, I've been able to bypass being an assistant, but I've kind of been an assistant all my life. Uh, I've been a gym rat since I was preschool. so. Uh, uh, and I, I was kicked out of seven practices at Indiana and eight at, at Newcastle. So uh, I think a lot of those exits from practice were probably because I was trying to be more of an assistant than what Coach Knight and Coach Alford wanted me to be. So uh, I, I've kind of been around that all my life, and uh, that, that was a very exciting start for me, and I think it's, it's come full cycle to where we were able to do the things. When I came to SMS, um, you know, we wanted to develop a national image, which I think we've done. Uh, people all over the country now are hearing about S SMS and uh, what we've been able to do there. Uh, we've got a chance to be ranked in the top 25, top 30 when the national polls come out. 
uh, which is unheard of there. Uh, our RPI was in the top 40 all year, um, and we're doing it the right way. Kids are graduating. Uh, they're doing the things that we want them to do off the floor. Uh, so I think this is it's the right time, and to be back in the Big Ten is, uh, is extremely exciting for me, uh, in particular an institution like Iowa that I've, um, uh, as, all, as most of the Big Ten schools, I've always had a great appreciation for because I was a player in this league. Steve, one of the things you did when you were at SMS was things were upgraded. Uh, is there anything that you've done here that you can see? Well, I, I, to be honest with you, this is uh, my first time uh, being in this building since 1987. Uh, when we got beat in here. So uh, I haven't been in here in a while. Uh, so I, I think that's things that you know, Bob and I will sit down and discuss because I think we both have uh, the right goals in mind. Of, uh, and I think any time uh, there's a change, uh, you've got to look at upgrade. And you know, I, I'm very respectful of, of what's here, and I will look at all the things that I think. I think the thing I just go into it with is open-minded. I, I, I think I communicate well enough that... Uh, Bob and I will have the relationship that if he thinks that uh, it's something I really believe in, I, I think he's going to be in favor for because I think he's got enough confidence in me with my, my passion and work ethic that uh, I want this program to uh, not only continue what it's done, but uh, reach new heights. And if uh, that means there's got to be some subtle changes, uh, then I think that's what will be addressed here in the next couple months. Steve, you've, you've, had had a chance, uh, you've had a chance to uh, take a look at the uh, players and the team. Well, I think that's hard uh, because I really haven't had a lot of time to do that. Uh, my whole focus this year has been uh, with my team at SMS. Uh, I have, uh, through the rumors and through Bob and I talking, uh, I have watched more Iowa basketball games uh, on the dish and, and things of that sort. But uh, any game film or anything that I've broke down have all been uh, related to SMS. So uh, I, I've really not had a great opportunity to be able to, uh, you know, and it's unfair, I haven't even had time to sit down with my team individually here uh, and fill them out uh, of what drives them and uh, to see if their passion can equal my passion uh, for winning championships and competing for championships. Uh, uh, I think I'm very excited. And you are watching live coverage of Southwest Missouri year. State coach, so now Hawkeye felt. coach, um, Steve Alford, and his appointment today. We will continue our coverage of Steve Alford's appointment. And, uh, it is only the beginning. We have team coverage of today's development. After guiding Southwest Missouri State to its best NCAA tournament showing by making the Sweet 16, head coach Steve Alford was named today as the new head coach at Iowa, replacing longtime man Tom Davis. Now, it's always been speculated that the former Hoosier star would take over for Bobby Knight in Indiana when he retired. But today, Alford might have put that to bed. I've got an opportunity now to be in, a, in an institution where uh, I would like to be here for a long, long time and uh, have no aspirations of uh, looking anywhere else or moving on anywhere else. 34-year-old Steve Alford was named the new head basketball coach at Iowa, replacing Dr. Tom Davis, who guided the Hawkeyes to the Sweet 16 before being ousted by UConn on Thursday. Alford leaves Southwest Missouri State after four seasons, having led the Bears to a 78-48 record and into the Sweet 16 this year. Alford, who played under coach Bobby Knight, helped Indiana to a national championship in 1987, and now Alford is back in the Big Ten. I've got an opportunity now to be in, a, in an institution where uh, I would like to be here for a long, long time and uh, have no aspirations of uh, looking anywhere else or moving on anywhere else. Uh, it's exciting to be where you want to be. Uh, and now know through the recruiting process and the scheduling and the development of players, uh, now you know you can see uh, the development of a national program uh, start to take place. And I think there's a great foundation here. I think there's great tra tradition here, uh, and we'd just like to further that. In case you were wondering, Steve's going to be bringing his dad, Sam, along as his assistant. Good evening. I'm Scott Sanborn, in for Bruce Howney. And I'm Liz Mathis. Steve Alford says he's glad to be back in the Big Ten. The new University of Iowa men's basketball coach played for the Indiana Hoosiers in college. His most recent stint was a successful run as coach of the Southwest Missouri State Bears. That team just made its best showing ever at the NCAA tournament. And sports director John Campbell joins us now. John, Alford's announcement wasn't much of a surprise, was it? Not much of a surprise, but I think a real coup because he, this is one of the up-and-coming uh, young men in this profession. Steve Alford has been successful at his two previous coaching stops, and Iowa Athletic Director Bob Bowlesby apparently got the man he wanted. 
Athletic director Bob Bowlesby said first contact was made with Alford back in December. By mid-February, they had a gentleman's agreement that they were number one on each other's list. As for contract negotiations... We are, are still in the process of working on that. Since going to the Sweet 16, we're still negotiating. <laughs> Several times, Alford said it was great to be back in the Big Ten. Said he hopes to build on the base that Tom Davis established. And he said he hopes that this move quiets rumors that he really wants to return to his alma mater, Indiana. I think I found that here in the University of Iowa, and uh, there is no need uh, to be looking anywhere else. This is where I would like to call home uh, for a long, long time and build it into a program to where now media and the fans would enjoy having me around for a long, long time. Several points, he gets a five-year contract, could reach up to 900000 per with clauses and incentives. His dad, Sam, will join the staff, and he said there's a high possibility that current assistant Rich Walker will remain with the basketball program. That's, Oof, that's a pretty good package. That's a nice package. <laughs> Thanks, John. Big dance with SMS, but it wasn't easy. Iowa advanced, and uh, I knew we needed to advance. And, uh, uh, Iowa advanced again, and uh, I knew we needed to advance again. And... Uh, uh, I didn't know if we could get all the way to the Sweet 16. <laughs> but they did. Now Alford says he'll bring an up-tempo game to Iowa. Man-to-man -man D and press occasionally. The most common word used at today's press conference? Passion. Steve's got it, and his team better. Uh, I think it's a privilege to be a Hawkeye, and I think it's, uh, uh, it's an outstanding opportunity uh, that these players have. But uh, you've got to be on the same page, and I know what kind of work goes into trying to win a Big Ten championship and uh, a national championship. And uh, before there's any work that takes place, you got to have a passion for playing the game of basketball. Oh, man, I'm real excited, uh, you know, just to get the opportunity to get out there and work with him, have him uh, break my game down and uh, just help you to improve. And, you know, he knows what's all, what it takes. Uh, it's not about just jumping ship and saying I'm going to be in the Big Ten. Uh, it's about the right Big Ten fit. Electricity was indeed in the air, and it certainly will be in no months and months to come. And Carver Hawkeye, Steve Alford, the new official head hawk, one quick fun fact here. It's kind of interesting. A couple minutes ago, Bob Bowlesby walked out with the new head coach. They had three basketballs in their hand, probably for Alford's three children, which will soon be coming to Iowa City. We'll have more on his family later on. Brian, we'll send it back to you. Brian, you'll also have more later on on just how the players react. But right now, give us a 10-second synopsis. What do the players have to say overall after this afternoon's announcement? Very, very excited. If you saw the press conference, you saw that he is a very charismatic guy, uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, fans are excited, me's excited, everyone's excited about having the coach here, and, and we'll see what happens. All right, we'll have more from sports right. director Rod Mackey later on in this broadcast. What has the new head hawk done to earn his way into one of the top basketball jobs in the Big Ten? With more on that, KGAN's Chris Miller in the newsroom. Chris. You know, Brian, today's announcement did not come as a surprise, you know, but I've been looking into Steve Alford's background, and here's what I found. The penetration, the little scoop shot in the lane. Yes! Even before Steve Alford became a household name during the NCAA tournament, he spent four years in the mid-80s torching Big Ten opponents while playing for Bobby Knight at Indiana. In fact, Alford was mainly responsible for leading IU to its third NCAA championship under Knight in 1987. After that, Alford made a brief four-year stint playing professional basketball for the Dallas Mavericks. He scored 744 points in his short NBA career. In 1991, Alford took over at Division III Manchester College in Indiana. He was hired in December of 91 when Manchester was 0-8. Three years later, his team ended 95-31-1 and, and runners-up in the Division III National Championship. Are you going to come off, come off, lay up, come off, jump shot, come off, hit him on the roll? In 1995, Alfred accepted the head coaching ranks at SMS. There he brought along father Sam as an assistant. Sam coached his son in high school. And through all the trials and tribulations of coaching, Alfred didn't receive the national recognition until round one of this year's NC2A tourney. Steals, Bruton, all the way, knocks it on. That's when a 12th seed mid-major school shocked Wisconsin, holding Dick Bennett's club to just 32 points. But two rounds later, SMS ran into a buzzsaw, top-ranked Duke. And even in defeat, Alford kept his head high. Now fans in eastern Iowa can call Steve Alford Iowa's 20th head basketball coach. 
You know, in the time I spent in Indiana, there are three people, Brian, that has legendary status. Bobby Knight, Larry Bird, and Steve Alford. Hopefully, he can bring that legendary status here to Iowa. We'll send it back to you. And as we said, from Hoosier to Hawkeye, thank you, Chris Miller in the newsroom. Let's crunch some numbers. Athletic Director Bob Bowlesby says the financial package for Coach Alford is still being worked out tonight, but we do know the total could approach $900,000. Bowlesby says Alford's base coaching, coaching salary is $150,000, but money from endorsements, sports camps, fundraising, and public relations could push that number to $350,000. Later on in this newscast, we'll have details about the rest of the package. Again, as we said, that could mean $900,000 total to Alford. We'll also explore how this package compares to what other Iowa... Apart from a few really hardcore Davis fans who say Davis is and always will be Iowa's Hawkeye coach, fans say they're ready for something bigger, something better, and they believe they're getting that in Alford. The fact that we were able to lure one of the best young coaches in the country, Steve Alford, to come to the University of Iowa. It's the moment Hawkeye fans have all been waiting for, the moment they'd learn who would be heading up the Hawks for the next five years. I'm excited for it. Perched on his stool at the Vine, Chad Miller had an idea Alford would be the new go-to guy. I was hoping. I think yeah, Mark went up for Bob Boltsby on this one. I think some people were disappointed with the football coach, maybe. But I think this is a good move. And speaking of Ferentz, some are wondering how we'll ever be able to tell the two apart. They look alike, they talk alike, they're both great young men. I'm really, really excited. And that seems to be the consensus. I am so excited about this. I'm excited to get the next basketball season underway. He's not decked out in his black and gold yet, but Alford says he's ready. It is a great honor. Uh, to be in the Hawkeye basketball program and to be able to be on that stage and uh, now perform that way. Give it everything you have and uh, when that happens, I turn into a basketball fan. Even the biggest Davis fans around say with a sparkling past performance like Alford's doesn't leave much room for talking trash. He's young and energetic and he definitely has knowledge for the game so I, I think he'll be able to just take off running with the program. I hope Steve does good. I really do. And without even seeing Alford on the Hawks home court, some are already hoping for a lengthy future. I hope he stays here a lot longer than four years. And, of course, as we've already pointed out, he will be here for five years. Overall, a positive reception at this afternoon's announcement, but there's still some nostalgia attached with Dr. Tom, and fans say that he will be sorely missed in the program. Brian? And Bryce, we're talking a lot of numbers here tonight. One of the big differences between Alford and Davis, their ages. Davis is 60. Alford is almost half that, 34. Are the fans viewing Alford's age as a positive or a negative? They're definitely viewing this as a positive. What we have to remember here, Brian, is that Alford has eight years of coaching experience under his belt already at two other universities. So where he may be young, he's def definitely got the experience to bring the Hawks to a vict victorious season, and fans seem to know this. All right, Bryce Daniels in our Coralville Newsroom. Thank you. Now, repeating the headlines of the day, Steve Alford is Iowa's new basketball coach. His five-year deal could total $900,000. Coming up later in this special hour-long edition of News Channel 2 at 6, members of the Iowa basketball team react to their new coach and consider their options. Sports director Rod Mackey talks with Alford's wife and tells us more about Steve Alford, the family man. We'll look at the process that brought Alford to Iowa City and take a closer look at the big money it takes to lure a Big Ten coach. That's all coming up in this hour on KGAN-TV News Channel 2, your home of the Hawks. He has it, and he wants his players to have it. That, according to the new coach, means going for Big Ten championships and competing for national titles. Uh, the players have to see, and I'll meet with them over the next couple weeks, if that's the goal they want. Um, if it's not the goal they want, uh, then there's probably going to be more changes. Uh, I, I'm not in the business to uh, to beg. I'm not in the business to... Uh, I don't beg people or players to come to the University of Iowa. Uh, you want to come because this is what Iowa's about, this is what this coaching staff's about, and you want to be a part of it. Scott Sable joins us live now from Iowa City. And, Scott, I thought that bite told us a lot about this man's personality and what he expects of his players. Yeah, John, they say he's a player's coach at 34 years of age. He likes to get out on the court in practice and go one-on-one -on -one with his players. He's even been known to chess bump them during games. He's got a lot of energy, and his players feed off that. One of Steve Alford's first priorities today was sitting down and talking to Iowa City West star recruit Glenn Worley. Did he get down on his knees and, and beg? <laughs> no, he didn't, get, he didn't get down on his knees and beg. He just, you know, told me how things were going to be with uh, the new staff and everything and this probably ensures more of me looking at Iowa a little harder. Alford also addressed his new team today and just about all the players were at the press conference. 
so far everybody says they're staying put and they really like their new coach. That's something that excited me a lot when he said he has a lot of passion and uh, you know I'm, I, I'm excited to get started working with him and uh, you know hopefully we can continue the success that we had this year. I'm sure the game of horse with him is just going to be a nightmare. Uh, the guy was amazing at Indiana and uh, we're just uh, excited about it. I mean, you can get instruction hands-on from somebody. Uh, it's going to be really beneficial. Think you can beat him in a game of horse? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, it's yet to be determined. The only guy on the team who has a chance to beat Alford in horse is Kyle Galloway, and I, I don't think he could do it, John. They seem to like this guy, and what's not to like? Okay, I agree with you, Scott. More coming up tonight at 10. It was not actually a dream team. It was made up of college players. At Indiana, not only was Steve Alford a two-time All-American, leading the Hoosiers to a national title in 1987, but in 1984, Alford and the Hoosiers upset North Carolina in the big dance, ending the college career of, yes, Michael Jordan. After a four-year NBA career, Alford rebuilt a program at Manchester College in Indiana. And this year, Alford took Southwest Missouri State to the Sweet 16, farther than that school had ever gone before in the NCAA tournament. The college basketball world sees Alford as a rising star, and now Hawkeye fans will see him as the 20th head basketball coach at the University of Iowa. Sports director Brian Leslie has the story of the new head hawk. In late February, Iowa Athletic Director Bob Bowlesby knew this was what he wanted to see. Steve Alford walking to the podium as the new Iowa basketball coach. Steve is bright and articulate and highly motivated and, and very accomplished for, for a guy that's uh, just in his mid-30s. Uh, he has an absolutely terrific work ethic. Uh, now I think the most rewarding thing for me is that uh, at 34, uh, I've got an opportunity now to be in, a, in an institution where uh, I would like to be here for a long, long time and uh, have no aspirations of uh, looking anywhere else or moving on anywhere else. Alford's style of play is more up-tempo than not. His teams press from time to time and adapt to whatever it takes to win. For example, their NCAA tournament opener against Wisconsin. Uh, I'm a basketball fan, first and foremost, so um, I don't like a game in the 40s and 50s. One of the most boring games I've ever set through was playing Wisconsin two weeks ago. Uh, uh, I, enjoyed, I enjoyed winning that game current Hawkeye players we talked to today said they liked what they heard today. I know he's a great coach, a great guy, and I got to meet him, and uh, you know, I think everybody, uh, straight for everybody on our team when I say we're, everyone's really excited. Ryan, is this a comfortable fit for you? I know you call him Steve. I mean, it's almost like you know this guy. I, uh, I went to one of his camps when I was younger, actually, at Manchester, a shooting camp and offensive camp, and I always kind of was a fan of his growing up, even though, uh, you know, being a Hawkeye fan, I always was a Steve Alford fan, and really respected his game and how hard he worked. Alford says he has not spoken without going coach Tom Davis, but plans to do so as soon as possible out of respect. In Iowa City, Brian Leslie for Iowa's News Channel. Of the new head honk, Steve Alford. Congratulations to Steve on the job. So we now officially know who the head coach is, but what about the players? Who's going to stay and who's going to go? Chris Miller is the man with the answers. And it is with great pleasure that I present to you our new basketball coach, Steve Alford. Steve Alford's appointment as Iowa's 20th head basketball coach brings about change in a program which has been without coaching movement in 13 years. And with change comes unsettling issues with some Hawkeye players. Many of them, though, are looking forward to Alford leading the way in 1999. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, he mentioned uh, changes are sometimes uncomfortable, but it's something that, uh, you know, obviously everybody's going to have to adapt to that's going to be here. So the excitement that he's going to bring to this, you know, he's young, he's, he's a little bit wild, and, uh, you know, finally, I think the greatest thing for my mom is going to be she has a cheering partner on the sidelines with his wife. He's a great coach, and I, mean, I think he'll be able to see the talent that this team had that we weren't able to show this year. Even high school phenom Glenn Worley from Iowa City West was on hand during today's press conference. Came back, got called from my high school principal saying that, you know, because Alford wanted to meet with me and that wasn't supposed to tell anybody that he was going to be a new coach and today he was announced as a coach. So I just came down here to, you know, talk to Coach Alford. Steve Alford's coaching philosophy will surely wow the Iowa fateful next season. But now his job entails getting on that recruiting road and trying to get some recruits in here next season and also keeping the nucleus of this year's Hawkeye team. Inconspicuous by his absence was freshman Joey Range. Range is currently in his hometown of Galesburg, Illinois, contemplating whether to leave or stay in the Hawkeye program. 
Also, Dean Oliver apparently made a brief appearance in today's press conference, then left some time later. That has some of his teammates baffled. Who wouldn't want to play for uh, Steve Alford? I mean, he's, uh, you know, he's hot right now. He's, uh, like I said, he's got a passion for the game, and, uh, you know, he's a great fit. I mean, you're not going to find anybody uh, out there that's any better. And Regardless of any player movement, one thing is readily apparent. Steve Alford is Iowa's basketball Thank coach for at much. least five years. In Iowa City, Chris Miller, KGAN, News Channel 2 Sports. Chris, thank you very much. Now, Mr. Miller mentioned recruiting. Iowa's go-to guy in that situation, Rich Walker, may stay a Hawkeye after all. Steve Alford mentioned his name several times during today's press conference, so it would be nice to see Rich Walker sticking around. All right, now let's talk about the Alford family. When they come to Iowa City, they're all coming, and there's a lot of them. You've got his wife, Tanya, and three children, Corey, Bryce, and Kayla. And, oh, yeah, Steve's father, Sam, is coming as well. He, of course, freelances as an assistant. And I think from a head coach, you always want loyalty. And, uh, boy, if you can't get loyalty from your dad, uh, <laughs> you're probably not going to get it. So uh, has a tremendous work ethic, and uh, we're excited about him coming on. The Midwest is known for the great family atmosphere, a uh, good place to raise a family. How big a factor was that in his decision to come in here in addition to all the basketball stuff? Well, it was a major factor. We grew up in Indiana, like I said before, and um, we've been in Missouri. We've, we, his two coaching jobs have been in Indiana and Missouri, and that's just where we're from, and that's where our families are from, and that's what we grew up with, and that's what's very important to us. One of the things he was very concerned about is what are the schools like in Iowa City? in the area, uh, what's it going to be like for my family living in Iowa City. The school systems and the family background uh, all played a big part in what we wanted to do. And it seems like your basketball team is a family to you and there's no uh, less than 100% from what you described up there. No, there's really not. Uh, you know, you end up being an extended family. These kids go away from their homes and away from mom and dads and uh, we kind of take them in. And uh, uh, we, we like to have open door communications and uh, I think it's a very fun and exciting system to be in and uh, we're looking forward to bringing that style here to Iowa. Finally, we move from the Hawkeyes to the Cyclones, the Lady Cyclones. University of Iowa, uh, and for all that to work out, I think on days off, you really sit around and think about that. Uh, but I think we really stayed to the grind and worked hard at trying to get SMS to the position where we could have the success we had. Announcing a year ago that this would be Tom Davis's last season created months and months of speculation. Those associated with the Iowa basketball program say they just had to block that out. The way he, he carried himself this whole year with all these, you know, these negatives around this program, I think the way we carried ourselves with all the uh, externalities around this program was just unbelievable to go as far as we did. Despite all the distractions, Boltzby says all this turned out well, and he's offering no regrets. Well, I don't spend much time second-guessing myself. I think we just got to put one foot in front of the other and move forward, and uh, I think we've taken a nice step today. This really is part of a new era in Iowa athletics with the recent retirements of football coach Hayden Fry and wrestling coach Dan Gable. Several new coaches are looking to carry on the tradition at the University of Iowa. Brian? Kevin, as you pointed out in your story there, we've, we've talked about this and guessed about it and speculated about it for about a year now. But so when was the deal actually finalized to the point where it could be announced? Well, Brian, both Bowlesby and Alford wanted to wait until the season was over for both schools before coming to any kind of agreement, and both teams made the Sweet 16 of the tournament. When both teams were finally eliminated, talk started to really get serious on Saturday night. Back to you. And 48 hours later, we have a new coach. Kevin Carrizzo, thank you. Still ahead on this special edition of News Channel 2 at 6, we'll take you live to Springfield, Missouri, where Coach Alford's decision is big news to the fans of Southwest Missouri State. 30 this afternoon out in Springfield, Missouri. They were holding a press conference to announce their coach had left. We are lucky enough now to be joined by Dan Lucy in Springfield, Missouri. He's with the CBS affiliate out there. And Dan, everyone here is very happy to have Steve Alford aboard. I imagine it's quite a different atmosphere there. Well, uh, Rod, I think for the most part, yeah. But we have to understand when Alford was hired about four years ago, the rumor going around the press conference was that he probably would last four or five years tops before moving on. So really, there's not a lot of shock here in Springfield. Almost it was expected. And we had the hints in East Rutherford this weekend that if something did happen, it would happen very quickly. Now, today's news, as we said, not unexpected. It's been in the rumor mill for more than a month. This is how we reported the story tonight. It was the death. Monday, at the same time in Iowa City and at SMS, one basketball program was losing a coach and one was gaining one. It's with mixed emotions that I tell you that uh, we're happy for Coach Alford and, uh, and his family uh, for, for what he's going to go to. He's uh, from the Big Ten originally, as you know that, and yet that's not to, uh, 
to take one thing away from what we have here at SMS. A few minutes later, Alford was introduced to a packed news conference in Iowa City. Alford moving into what he calls a dream job. He played in the Big Ten with Indiana and now is coaching in the powerhouse league. It's exciting to have the opportunity to be uh, back in the Big Ten, um, obviously a, a player in the Big Ten and no uh, full well what the Big Ten Conference is all about and uh, the rigors and wars of uh, all the places you have to go. And Alford's job won't be easy in Iowa City. He's replacing a legend in Tom Davis, a coach who's worn the black and gold for 13 seasons. Before this year started, the Iowa Athletic Director told Davis his contract would not be renewed. The team rallied around its coach and went on to advance to the Sweet 16, losing Thursday to UConn. I guess I want to start also by uh, congratulating uh, Coach Davis and the staff and uh, the players of this year's team. And I think that's why I'm so proud of both teams. Uh, uh, for the Iowa players to stay to the grind and, and really go through what I think were a lot of possible distractions and still accomplish the things that they accomplished. Alford will take his father along as well. Sam was Steve's assistant for four years in Springfield and says he will continue his role in Iowa City. Yeah, I think I've got some basketball left in me. As long as I can help him, uh, I told Steve from day one he has to be man enough that when dad becomes a hindrance, he's got to say, hey, uh, it's time to go out to pasture, and I don't think I'm there yet. You got tears in your eyes a little bit. Uh, well, uh, an emotional day, huh? It's been an emotional day. Uh, you know, you, it's hard to separate uh, father and coach all the time. But I'm, I'm pleased for Steve. I'm proud uh, of what he's accomplished. You know, being the Big Ten at age 34 in a quality university is, is great. But by the same token, uh, we leave SMS with nothing but fond memories. And, of course, some of those memories, 78 victories in four seasons, upgrading the schedule, getting to the NIT a couple of years ago, and then, of course, the big NCAA run the last couple of weeks. They went down to Charlotte, upset Wisconsin, and then Tennessee to get to the Sweet 16. And then, Rod, they have played Duke, the toughest of anybody in this conference, in this NCAA tournament, losing by 17 on Friday night. So uh, that's the situation from Springfield. Obviously, the folks here expecting this move to happen, really not that shocked uh, to see it uh, finally come to development. Hey, Dan, let me ask you, I know they had a closed-door meeting for 40 minutes yesterday, Coach Alford, with his current players. Is there any chance that any of the Bears might come to Iowa City and join their coach? Well, one of the things that Coach Alford told his players was that it was their duty now to stay with SMS and to help carry on the winning program that he has helped develop. I talked with five players today, all of them saying that they will stay at SMS, and one of the players told me that Will Fauntleroy will stay as well. One of the five players that I talked to was Brandon Miller, who was a freshman guard, who uh, his father was an assistant coach with Sam Alford in Newcastle, Indiana. Uh, Steve and his wife Tanya actually babysit Brandon when he was little. He told told me that he wants to stay at SMS, that he wants to be a Bear. These guys are not only looking forward to carrying on Alford's tradition here, but they're also looking for him to schedule Iowa, you know, home and home, to come down to Hammonds. That'd be something special to see. In fact, it's pretty funny. Alfred looked at the schedule and realized that he has three teams from the uh, M MVC on his schedule. He's a little <laughs> nervous about it. He knows how good that conference is. That's right, and the scouting will be a, a cinch for those Missouri Valley schools as well. Oh, very good. That's Dan Lucy in Springfield, Missouri. Dan, thanks again for taking time out. Nope. All right, so that's the story out there. Here's the story in Iowa City. Indeed, a busy, busy day in sports. Quite an emotional day for the Hawkeyes. And coach Steve Alford, the new head Hawk and the old Hawk, Tom Davis. Once again, keep in mind he was Iowa's all-time winningest coach, 13 seasons here, and you know he's going to land on his feet somewhere. Many places will come calling. Wait for Tom Davis's press conference somewhere soon, perhaps Marquette. We know they are very interested. Brian, we'll send it back to you. Rod, isn't, uh, there's, isn't Baylor another one? Indeed I have, Greg. I'm joined by St. John's head coach Mike Jarvis, who, uh, whose team actually played three of the final four teams this year, UConn, Duke, and Ohio State, who sadly eliminated you in the regional final. Tubby Smith, of course, head coach of the Kentucky Wildcats, who fell to Michigan State last Sunday. And Steve Alford, whose Southwest Missouri State Bears were eliminated by Duke in the Sweet Sex Sweet 16. But on Monday... You became the head coach of Iowa, and uh, as everyone knows, you're taking your father, Sam, along with you, but what everyone really wants to know is, are you taking him along for the babysitting skills or the strategy, you know? Definitely the strategy. Uh, he's not going to leave the grandkids very far from, from the base, but uh, he's been in the business 35 years, and he's a big credit to our program. All right, well, let's start uh, with your thoughts on Ohio State, Connecticut, Coach Jarvis. You've played both teams. Both have exceptional backcourts. What is the real key there that's going to make the difference in this game? Well, I think, first of all, the backcourts will pretty much neutralize each other. Um, so you really got to look at the, the guys up front. You got to look at what the centers do, uh, the Johnson-Bosco uh, matchup, and then, of course, Freeman-Singleton. And I think that 
there's where the, the difference may come, and that's where the storyline of this game may come. Although you thought that the backcourts might outweigh each other in your <laughs> matchup with Ohio State, and their backcourt was, was exceptional. Uh, Coach Smith, for Jim O'Brien and Jim Calhoun, their first Final Four, it was your first Final Four last year when you won the championship, but what are these guys going through as they prepare for this huge weekend? Well, they're so focused on getting their team prepared, and you know they've had time to, to go back home and look at tape. Certainly, the mundane, the things you do, the, the normal, try to make it as normal as possible with all the hype that's around it, it's going to be enough excitement for those young men. It's got to be tough to do because the coaches are excited oh, too. You're, you're loving every moment of it, but you know you've got to stay focused. Steve, let's, let's go to you because you played guard, of course, on the 1987 Indiana team that won a championship, and everyone talks about backcourt play being so critical in winning a championship. Whose backcourt do you favor in this uh, UConn-Ohio State matchup? Well, it's like Mike said, uh, it, they're two great backcourts, and uh, it, it is. Uh, the backcourt's going to play a heavy role in this because uh, they start your offense. Uh, and you can't turn the ball over. Uh, if you're going to turn it over, it's got to be aggressive mistakes, uh, not passive mistakes. And they kind of key your defense. Uh, you've got to start your aggressive, aggressiveness out at the defensive end, and that starts with your guard play. Now that tape's got to bring back some memories, huh? <laughs> Short shorts, then. <laughs> All right, let's go to the late game, which is Duke, Michigan State, and Tubby, your, your team played both, of course. What impressed you so much about Michigan State last Sunday? Well, when you get beat, you're very impressed by people. <laughs> I thought Tom Izzo and his staff had them well prepared. They've got a very tough team. You know, they don't give up. And, and in their backcourt, and Mateen Cleave, they have a guy that, who's a quarterback, and he plays like that. He's very physical, can throw the long pass as he did to Hudson against us. Have about four players on the team that were former football players in high school. So. I think it'll be a good matchup, especially in the front court with Antonio Smith and with Hudson. Those guys are very physical. And there's a good matchup there between Duke and Michigan State. Coach Jarvis, people talk about the fact that, you know, no one has really been able to keep it close with Duke, but everyone remembers Madison Square Garden and St. John's taking them to overtime. How were you able to challenge the Blue Devils? Well, I think, first of all, you've got to go into the game believing that you can play with Duke. I think a lot of teams lose to Duke before they ever step on the court. And once you get on the court, you've got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. It's almost like a heavyweight bout. I mean, you've got to battle them, and you've got to, you know, you've got to be very physical, I think, with Duke. All right, last question. I'll throw this one out to each of you. You've all played Duke. You've all lost to Duke this season. If you were going to face them again this evening, what would you do differently? Steve Alford, let's start with you. I'd put my father, I'd anoint my father as the head basketball coach so that he'd get the loss and uh, I wouldn't get the loss. Tubby? Boy, I don't know what we'd do. You know, I'd rather not play them again, but those guys are pretty good. You know, certainly we would try to make more shots. That's about all you could do. How about you, Coach Jarvis? Well, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to play them on campus, and most of all, I'm going to bring my own officials. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you would all love to do that. Guys, thanks so much for joining us. Let's go back now to Greg Gumbel. Race for Lou Monday, the championship game between the UConn and Duke. Well, 12 years ago in a different dome, a little bit west of here in New Orleans, it was Steve Alford in Indiana getting set to battle for the national championship against Syracuse. Now, of course, you're coaching Iowa, coach Southwest Missouri State against Duke in this tournament. Before we get to the coaching stuff and let these guys have at you, I want to ask from a player's perspective, what's it like the hours and the minutes before tip-off of a championship game? Well, it's just an accumulation of everything you've dreamed of as a young boy. Uh, I knew growing up in Indiana, that's the pinnacle of college basketball and uh, you're just waiting for the band to start playing and uh, the coach to finally say you can run out onto the floor uh, had a great passion for playing the game and you know you're one of just a select group of guys that are playing on the final night of college basketball did you sleep and were you fatigued before that championship game that's that's no. the thing that comes up a lot with teams and fatigue in the final I, I think all those things are thrown out in the final game because you know it's the last game of the season there are no other games and uh that you don't stand up in the pinnacle and say, next. This is the one game where there is no more next. Hey, congratulations on your new job at Iowa. A lot of people don't know your first, your first road game in the Big Ten is going to be at Indiana. <laughs> I mentioned Indiana. Steve, you are such a great shooter. I thought I've said it so many times. You were the best player I have seen in college move without the ball and get your shot. Langman wasn't able to get his shot against Michigan State. What does he have to do to be able to get free for his shot? Well, I think it's already been mentioned a little bit. Uh, if, if Connecticut's going to put more on Avery, which I think is probably the matchup that has to take place because Avery's the guy that initiates the offense. Uh, but if Avery can handle that matchup, now who is guarding Langdon? Uh, now you've taken your best defender and taken him off what I think is the best scorer and the best shooter in the country. Uh, he's got, Langdon's got a great catch pivot. If he gets things set, uh, he's very, very dangerous. Michigan State made a big run in the semi, and who was it that made the big, tough, off-balance shot off the dribble? It was Langdon. Steve, I was really impressed. Your game plan going to the Meadowlands, which I'm sure no one expected. 
you attacked full court pressure defense. That really got your kids into the game, took the pressure off your kids. It was the right mindset, and that's why you played so well in the first half. Is that a plus for UConn to go after him early? Oh, and I think you'll see UConn do that. Uh, UConn probably had more, will have more of a swagger than what we had, and yet that's why I'm so proud of our kids. Uh, we were not in awe of Duke, and I think if you're in awe of Duke, uh, the game can be over in the first five minutes. And I, I think UConn will come at him uh, equally as hard, if not hard, while we came at him. You guys made Duke look very mortal. Krzyzewski wasn't all that happy with his effort, but you did it with the same suffocating defense you played the entire tournament. How much of it is what you can control defensively, how much of it is just chance if Duke's going to shoot well or shoot poorly? Well, they've got eight guys, and they're very, very talented. Uh, we decided to double down on Brand and make somebody else hurt us, and uh, unfortunately, Langdon really hurt us. I think you pick your poison a little mm -hmm. bit with them. In a title game, uh, I'd like to make Duke make the 19-foot, 9-inch shot. Uh, it just it becomes a little bit tighter. That all of a sudden stretches out to 23 feet. Uh, you don't want Brand one-on-one -on -one in a post, but uh, I, I think if I got to do something, I got to make one of these guys hurt. Make Carewell make shots. Make McGetty make shots. Make somebody besides Langdon, Avery, and Brand hurt. Yeah, here's the game against Duke where you guys were more hurt by the perimeter shots. Well, you know, both clubs really excel, Steve, on a perimeter. And in basketball today, efficiency starts on a perimeter. If you're not strong there, you can't win. As a former guard and an All-American, who do you give the edge to in the backcourt? Uh, that's tough, because I think you got two great backcourts. Uh, I, not my first in-person look uh, was the other night with Alameen, and I thought he was tremendous. Uh, uh, he gives you more in person than I think he does on film or, or watching him on TV. I think he's a super sophomore. And then you got guys like Avery that are matching up against him that, that they don't get any better than that. Uh, I like, if I got to give an edge, I like Duke just because I think Avery and Langdon just have very few weaknesses. I think that backcourt can score. I think they can also guard you. Steve, Duke is such a great spurt team, and, and you did an excellent job the first half against them. And then that second half, they get those spurts. Looking at the tape, going back over it, what would you do to adjust to sort of knock out those 12 to 2 runs that they like to get? Well, we were able to stay away from most of that. Uh, the first half, they didn't get it. The second half, they got a 10-0 run on us, and I think that really broke us down and hurt us. Uh, you want to change defenses. You want to try to do something else, but uh, they are so explosive. And we've talked about UConn's transition. I think Duke's great in transition. And uh, their spurts don't let It's a 10-0 run in about a 40-second span. Right. So uh, unless you want to burn up all those timeouts, uh, it's very difficult to stop. You've got to get great shots against them, uh, and you've got to dominate the boards, and those are two things that are hard to do. Obviously, very few teams have been able to take Duke down to the wire. Let's say Connecticut's able to do that. Let's take it back to 87 when Keith Smart, not you, ends up taking the game-winning shot. If Krzyzewski has to make a decision, if there's a guy for Duke who gets the last shot on the design play, who would you choose? Well, I think in our 87 team, Keith was probably the only guy uh, that could take over the last five minutes in the game, and he was able to do that. With Duke, you got a variety of different guys. Uh, Brand can hurt you inside. Uh, I love Langdon on Primer, and Avery can break you down off the dribble at any time. So you do anyone to choose from? You're, you're, it, it's a great choice if you're Coach K. Steve, now that you're at Iowa, obviously you're Midwest oriented. What what do you think the key is to recruiting base? Because obviously in the Big Ten, great players from different parts of the Midwest is around the country. Can you expand your recruiting outside of the Midwest? Do you feel what is going to be the best for you to get the best kids at Iowa? Well, I think what's been lost in the last three or four years is the in-state kids have left Iowa. And uh, obviously our recruiting has got to start in Iowa. They're great players in the state of Iowa. Uh, we've got to do a good job of keeping them home. Go to the Midwest, which uh, we've got great ties as a coaching staff in the Midwest. I've grown up in the Midwest. And I think eventually down the road we're going to be able to do it on national picture. Hey, two parts to this question. Number one, I want to know, first of all, you and Mike both played for the general. You both played for Robert Montgomery Knight. When you look at his club, do you see a lot of similarities defensively that you had and were taught to you by Bobby Knight? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, the, they continue to get after you. I think that's something that they're constantly harping on. At the, that has slipped a little bit. But uh, we played Indiana two years ago, and uh, it was the same suffocating Indiana defense, a very defense that's very hard to score on. Hey, one question that I have you'd like to know, too. What's it going to be like uh -huh. when you walk into Assembly <laughs> Hall for the first time as the coach of Iowa? It's going to be very difficult just from the standpoint that bench is the closest to the banner that we hung in 87. Uh, and there were a lot of special memories that I had as a player there. But it's a lot like Coach Knight going back into Ohio State and coaching instead of playing against them. Or back in the Army. <laughs> get the win and get out. That's that, right. That'll be your uh, Big Ten road opener next year at Iowa. Congratulations. Great job. Thank you very Missouri State. Thanks, guys. Steve Alford joining us from nice St. Election. Petersburg. We have more coaches. Calvin Sampson, Brian Ellerby of Michigan still ahead. Plenty more from Dick and Digger on the UConn-Duke matchup, which will